Welcome to the Wurdenberg Family Farm with Brenda and Don. Don, hey, we're on. Oh, uh, come and join us. We'll show you how we built the solar pavilion and we will show you how we did in the first year of solar production. Him staring at the meter should give you an idea. He likes watching it go backwards. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, this is the location of the solar pavilion. The previous owner had corn, so we had to wait for the corn to come down before we could even start working on it. So to start the project, we needed to bore the holes with the auger. Fortunately, the tractor and the auger did that for us, saved us a lot of time. We had to go down about 48 inches. I am very thankful for the auger. It would have taken 10 times as long. And it's awesome we didn't hit any big rocks. There's a lot <laughs> of limestone out there. It's a miracle we didn't hit rock out of eight holes. Yeah. So to start, we had to set the posts and make sure they're plumb, and we um, secured them with bracing. You can see our son Alex in the one hole. It shows it's about four feet deep. So we braced each of the posts as they went up, and eventually there would be eight posts. Once the posts were set, we filled them with concrete. But before that, at the bottom of the post, we drilled a hole and put in half inch rebar that uh, stuck out one foot on either side of the post and that would set in the concrete to give greater strength for lift. We did need to take breaks once in a while. <laughs> there we go. Posts are all set and secure and you can see there's a transit that we used to make sure that we got everything level at all at the proper height. With all the posts set, it's time to move to the next phase. We used the transit to throw a line that will make sure we cut the tops off evenly. And they did work in the dark quite a few evenings. So while we had a generator with lights, we also had to use all of our vehicles to shine light on it so they could keep working. So we notched the tops of the posts to accommodate the beam. And then we drilled through the beam and the post and use the lag bolts. And they spent a lot of time on ladders, which made me very nervous to watch. <laughs> There's the team. With me is my son Alex and son-in-law Charlie. Jake was there sometimes, but not that day. Our son Alex engineered the trusses. We had them manufactured by a local firm. And this day they delivered the trusses and we prepared to take them back to the pavilion. But before we installed them, we had to paint them. And here we used a gray primer. It was an oil-based primer. And that was so much fun. Oh, I loved painting those trusses. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta admit, they did turn out looking nice when we were done. It's a beautiful barn red. Yep. I like that color. Yeah, it does look nice. So much fun. Yeah. I'm just loving it. We received our shipment of solar panel channels. These aluminum channels are used to hold the panels in place. In our case, the channels are attached to the top of each truss. It was cold outside, so we wanted to do a test fit inside one of our outbuildings. So we secured two solar panels to the trusses to make sure it was secure. And it worked just perfectly. Before we placed the solar panels and trusses, I wanted to prepare the ground underneath because I knew we would be using the tractor and a raised platform to be working and I wanted it to be smooth. And this is what a farmer does when he doesn't have a crane or scaffolding. <laughs> the elevated platform not only helped us be able to work on the trusses, but we used it to secure a module of two trusses that were secured together. And this was key to our construction method of putting up additional trusses. It was a little scary watching them get that over there and get it in place, but I gotta admit, the farmer scaffolding worked very well. In preparation for setting the trusses, we pre-staged all of the equipment, including the trusses with channels, the ladders, and the elevated platform. Once the truss assembly 
was loaded onto the beams, we had to slide it over and place in the center, and then we worked out from the center. Here we added the first additional truss, and you can see the spacer bars that are used to make sure that we have the proper distance, and it also gives support to the truss until we add the solar panel. Here we're passing the solar panel up through the trusses and then we'll lay it on the track of both trusses and bolt it down. This is how far we got after the end of the first day. We were pretty happy to have panels on both sides which gave a lot of strength. Then the next day we got a little more efficient. Here we're passing up the next truss. And since they didn't have a crane, it took two or three of them pushing up from the bottom plus one up in the trusses pulling it up in place. So we would put it in place and then we would use that template spacer again until we pass up the panels. I think it was pretty smart that we painted them all before we went up there. It would have been difficult for you to paint. <laughs> it was bad enough painting them on the ground. <laughs> So I think this is the very last panel, and by this time we were ready for the job to be done. Especially because this day was a very cold and very windy day. I think there was 20 mile an hour winds. So I was just afraid it was going to pick up one of the panels and take it away. But this was late in November, so we were pretty fortunate to have uh, as good a weather as we did have. Yeah, at least there wasn't any snow on it. <laughs> no, and there was no pandemic when we put this up either. Yeah, this is November of 2019. So, but I know these guys were very happy whenever this job was done. It was hard work. So there we go. Very productive day. We feel good because all of the panels are on, which made the structure strong in the event that we had a winter storm. Well, from my perspective, the construction looked pretty hard, but then came time for the wiring, and that didn't look very easy either. <laughs> well, actually, there were two parts of it. I did the manual labor, digging the holes, and then our son, Alex, who's the engineer, came in and did the actual wiring and uh, put in the, there's the shutoff box with the fuses. You can see we have it down in the hole 18 inches. We took that picture so we could prove it to the inspector. But there we go, Alex is fishing wire through the conduit. And I did lay a second set of conduit in there in case we do an expansion project. Which we're talking about right now. Isn't that beautiful? So we can celebrate now the solar panels in place and it is productive. Believe it or not, this was Christmas Eve. We had a family gathering and we did fireworks on Christmas Eve to celebrate. Yeah, and this is what happens when it snows. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the snow slides off of the solar pavilion fairly quickly. So we actually put the solar pavilion in place a year ago, so I can give you the results of the first year productivity. We projected a 17 megawatt hour production, and actually we got 19.5 megawatt hours, which exceeded the engineer's projection, which is great in my view. This chart here shows the monthly production and it, it follows exactly the sun height in the sky, which is what you'd expect. So starting the year in January, it's a low production, less than one megawatt hour of uh, production. And then it peaks in June and July, it's almost three megawatt hour. So it's very predictable. Um, and it's predictable in the second half of the year, it stair steps down exactly the opposite as it did earlier in the year. So my son said that the solar production is boringly predictable. <laughs> well, the fun part for me is when the electric bill comes through and it's a negative number. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. 